Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Just Keep Breathing on Rational Radio, rationalbroadcasting.com, you stream, it's Just Keep Breathing, it's Tuesday, the day after Labor Day, my in-studio guest today, what are we going to call you? Let's call you Allie, and Allie is a drag king, and her performance name is Dante Diamond. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? It's hot. It is hot. It is hot. It is very hot. Looking forward to some fall weather pretty soon. You know, and it's going to break any time. Um, I, I thought it was breaking a little too early a couple of weeks ago. but. So you are gearing up for a, for a contest. I am. I'm on the way to Fayetteville, Arkansas on the 22nd of September for Mr. Arkansas US of A MI Classic. And MI stands for Male Illusion. It does. And, um, and we were talking earlier, this is your first contest. My very first prelim, yes. And um, let's clarify. Boy pageants are called contests. Uh, pageant contests. Yes, so it, it, they, are. they are still called pageants? Yes. Okay. Um, and it, it's been quite of an evolution. So have you been following it since? When, when, when did you start um, getting interested in male illusion? Well, it's funny because uh, I moved to Dallas in uh, July of 2010, and I did not like drag early on. I thought it was silly. I didn't watch the shows or anything. And I came out here and... Once I started working, I watched the uh, women up in the Rose Room, and I started getting interested in the history of drag. So um, I did some research online, and I said, I wonder what kind of male history is going on, besides the only thing I had heard of, which was the San Francisco Drag King Contest. That's been going on since 94. But I started to look, and I found out that there were pageants, there were kings that actually competed, um, outside of troops and uh, you know the usual burlesque type things, but um, I thought I'd see if I could find my niche in it. And and so what 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 kind of research? What did you find in the research? Sorry for the break there. That's all right. Um, yeah, I traditionally. Um, I'll refer to male drag for a few minutes. Uh, women were not allowed on stage in at the uh, turn of the century, so men were in female drag. Um, one of the earliest that I knew of was Catherine Hepburn in Sylvia Scarlet, 1936. She did an amazing, amazing. They transformed her very well. Uh, you can see pictures online. Uh, Gladys Bentley was a blues singer in the the 20s to the 40s, she used to perform in male drag. And there was also a drag review called the Jewel Box Review that was out of Miami. They um, t traveled the country most of the year, and in the winters they would be in Miami at the Jewel Box Club. But it was billed as 25 men and a girl. And the girl was a one of the earliest drag kings, Stormy Delivery. And uh, not only was she a drag king, she was... A black woman, which, you know, back then traveling with uh, a lot of drag queens and being, you know, a black woman in the 50s and 60s. So she was a really, she was a pioneer of our times. Uh, they were really asking for it, weren't they? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. She's also a Stonewall veteran, actually. She was there. Um, and her name again was? Stormy Delivery. Stormy Delivery. Well, all right, Stormy. What is Stormy up to these days? She was living in the Chelsea Hotel in New York City, and she's in care right now, I believe. They've uh, decided to clear out her room and charge a higher rate for a longer period of time. So she apparently knows long, no longer has a home. So uh, it's important to remember our forefathers, where they came from. Absolutely, and, uh, the I agree The people with that, that paved the way. So uh, that's something to remember. 
you know, in the um, in the fifties and sixties, um, it was illegal for women to dance with another woman and men to dance with another man, and um, the women couples, one would dress up as a man and one would dress up as a woman mm -hmm. or would just dress as a woman um, so that when um, the gay bars got raided, you know, they were they were seeing a, a male and a female dancing rather than two women. Right. And so a lot of the a lot of the costuming and the illusion was just to keep from getting busted right um and that's pretty crazy and that really wasn't very long ago no we're looking at 50 60 years mm -hmm. um so how did you get started in male illusion i have to give a nod to my friend rita fine she uh suggested we do a kenny and dolly for an event called turnabout that kevin has every year and I bought some crepe hair and a suit from the thrift store, whatnot, and we got up and did Islands in the Stream, Kenny and Dolly, and <laughs> everyone loved it, and I didn't get back in drag for some time then. You were there. And, uh, I was there. Um, it was cute. It was really good. I believe the next thing I did was an event called Kings for a Cause, which is in its fourth or fifth year now. That is a Anson Rain, one of my drag brothers uh, founded that and that benefits a national organization as well as a local organization of the uh, show's choice this year uh, it benefited resource center of dallas and nationally it was it gets better foundation um, we gave money last year to youth first texas and i was in that last year we had that at sue ellen's that happens every august it's a weekend um, but lately i've been on stage every chance I can get. I've been costuming, stealing ideas, shopping, a lot of shopping. Stealing, I can't stop shopping. That's right. <laughs> so you've been bitten by the bug. I have. You know, I, I find it interesting that um, drag kings call um, male illusion um, dressing in drag as well. Yes. And, um, I mean, normally when you hear the word drag, you associate it with a man in women's clothing. You don't uh, automatically assume that it's a woman in, man, in men's clothing. Right. Um, and you've been performing on Thursday night in the talent night in the Rose Room. Are you, are you finding it difficult for, um, how about for venues and for performance opportunities? You know, I, I see that increasing, and that's what I hope to do uh, should I win Mr. Arkansas U.S. of AMI, which I don't plan on going over there and losing, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I, I would like to bring an element of professionalism at any age and show people that they, they can do this. A um, lot of, you know, troops, performance groups or whatever incorporate burlesque, um, gender performance. Traditionally, that's how that's gone. Um, and so when you say burlesque, is it, is it female as male stripping? No, it's female as in tassels on. Okay, so boots. it is actually, Doing the whole you're, burlesque you're, incorporating, you're incorporating drag king with a female performer, um, stripper, burlesque, erotic dance right throughout, okay. throughout my research i've seen a lot of yeah troops around the states that do that where, where they where they kind of like gain forces and kind of put together a whole review mm -hmm. yeah i've it's seen actually it as well show. it's really it's really good a lot of places um i think this field is growing um we've proven that we can perform on stage with the queens and hold our own um not everyone uh, pageants are not for everyone you know it's probably just like female drag i guess um not, pageants are not for everyone. Some people are content to do it on a local level and have fun with it. Um, I want the bling. Do you? <laughs> yeah. And and so if you win, what what kind of bling do you get? Because you do get a crown, don't you? I get you? a crown and sash. But 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 the crown is um, generally a, a 
a male royal crown, mm -hmm. and the sash will say, Mr. Arkansas, U.S. of A. And that is a preliminary to Mr. That is a preliminary to nationals, which are in National March, of, MI. March of every year in Oklahoma City at Angles. Uh, that'll be March this year, this next year, um, for Mr. U.S. of A. MI and MI Classic. And is there a Texas MI? There's not, is there? There has been before. They are working on another one for hopefully next year. What do you, what do you hope, not, not, just, not just to win, but what do you hope to gain in Arkansas? I hope to gain a sense of accomplishment. I hope to be able to expand and branch out and be a positive representative for MI and to sell the system in that way in the surrounding states and in Texas. That's my goal. That's one of my goals. Are there misconceptions about drag kings? Yeah. Um, there are a few that are in transition. Not everyone wants to, though. I'm sh there's... Uh, you know, everybody's like, "Well, you just want to be a you you want to be a man," and it's like, "No, I don't." And you know, it's as close to a man as I want to be. Um, I like expressing my male self, though, in this positive manner. Um, it's performance. It's fun. It's entertainment. Um, it's it's a good way for it's an outlet for me. It's, you know, it's it, turned into a creative outlet. I've really started to enjoy it. <laughs> good. Yeah, you look like you do. So. Um, I, I would believe that the drag kings and the drag queens probably share similar um, misconceptions and fallacies, if you will. Yes, we do. Um, do people think that drag queen or drag kings are prostitutes? <laughs> no, that's a, that's a new one on me. Because, you know, a lot of times, you I'm know. I'm sure we'll get there, though. <laughs> people will say that drag queens are, are, you know, prostitutes and whores and thieves. So what, what, are, the are, what, what, what are the misconceptions <laughs> of drag kings? Well, you know, I, do, I, I think there's a lot of prostitution <laughs> in, um, in female illusion. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of prostitution. I think, I, I think it is kind of um, sexually uh, underground mm -hmm. and... Um, I think people offer money to to pay for it, or you know, offer money to spend time with it. Right. Does that? Do you think that happens in the drag king world? I'm quite sure it does. I'm sure it does. Do you ever have straight women, you know, come on to you like, oh my, oh my, if you were a real man, I'd, you know, da 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 da. It's happened. Yeah. With guys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, strange things are afoot at Station 4. Uh, absolutely, they certainly are. Lots so, of fun, though. Have you had a gay guy come on to you like he thought mm -hmm. you were a gay guy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's interesting. Is it? Yeah. Um, have you ever been hit on by a man before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't get hit on by women um, no. when I'm in drag. When I'm in drag. I've I've been hit on by women in really weird places like the grocery store, All right. and that's that's always felt very odd. So how do you? One of the one of the greatest questions for a drag queen is where do you put it? You know we we hear it all the time. Right. Where do you put it? Where do you put them? The best way I found is duct tape, and you shove them up under your arms, and you get somebody to bind you. You shove them up under your arms. There's a way to do it. You shove them up under your arms. Just tape them off to the side and put a binder shirt over there and instant guy. You shove them under your arms. Ow! Do people ask you that all the time? Where do you put them? They have. What'd you do with them? What'd you do with them? <laughs> you're flat. What'd you do? Because, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of well endowed. Yeah. Um, do you think it's harder to become a man for a woman to become a man than it is for a man to become a woman? Ironically, I was reading an article the other day about how somehow it was easier for men to transform into women through the use of makeup and uh, 
you know, feminine garb and whatnot, but um, there's, there's contouring that you can do. You have to, there's, I've got a friend now, uh, Jimmy D, that just moved into town, and he's taught me a lot about drag king. And he's been, you know, up in Tulsa for a long time. Um, and he just competed in the uh, newcomer show on um, last Thursday in the Rose Room and placed third runner-up. He, he did, did got third runner-up. He did really well. I, yes. I, I was really impressed with him. And you were in his talent? Yes. yes. And he shot you? Yes. And you died? I did. And um, in the backstage, we were like, shoot her again! <laughs> shoot her again! <laughs> did you know that we were doing that? Yes. Kill her! Kill her, mommy! <laughs> kill her! <laughs> I thought I did a good death. It was really fun. I that mean, when, when and she shot you, you went right to the ground. <laughs> we we applauded your death. You guys didn't have very very difficult choreography, though. Uh, he wrote all that himself, actually. Yeah. It was really good. Good. So he's on the way to uh, Oklahoma for his own pageant this weekend. And that is? That's Mr. Oklahoma, U.S. of A, M.I. Uh, that'll be Friday night in uh, Tulsa. And if he doesn't win, is he going to pe compete against you in Arkansas? Oh, no, he's, you're going for Classic. I'm going for Classic, which for, in the MI world, is 33 and up for US of A. Uh, I believe for y'all it's, what, 40 and up 40, for Classic? Yeah. yeah. wonder why 33. I don't know. Uh, drag kings don't last near as long as queens do, I don't think. There's been a very few, very few in, like, New York and San Francisco. But, um, you know, as drag queens that pride themselves on lineages and families and um, houses, so to speak. Um, I hope to change that. Stay around for a few years. So, are you of a house? No, I'm just me right now. So you're just Dante Diamond. I am. You, you I'm did up not. For adoption. You don't come for. You don't come from a lineage of diamonds. No. Um. Yeah. Where did you come up with your name? The Dante name I just made up because I thought it was masculine. Uh, the diamond I borrowed from a drag queen in Tucson that I used to watch years ago. Uh, Aviva Diamond was her name, and Aviva. Aviva Diamond, and she's not doing drag anymore, actually. Um, uh, what was Aviva like? Aviva was awesome. She did a great share, and I remember her doing "This Time I Know It's for Real" by Donna Summer at IBTs during Jello wrestling, which I participated in that year. So, uh, I, she just struck me. She was tall, statuesque, hair out to here. Really, she was great. She was great. Um, Does she know that you've taken her name? No, I don't. <laughs> so you, you are sort of from a lineage-ish. Um, Somewhat. Borrowed, stolen, or... Inspired. Inspired by. Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of times th that's how names do happen. Mm -hmm. um, what, was your, what was your first pet's name that was male? Satan. Oh, my God, you're kidding. <laughs> Satan. And what was the, the name of the road that you grew up on? Denim. You were, so that's another way to get your drag name. That's funny. And yeah. so you're Satan Denim. <laughs> I think Dante Diamond is better. Yeah. <laughs> Satan Denim. Otherwise I had to be oh, in Denim dear. all the time. Then so. you'd have to, you'd have to go on tour with Sharon Needles. <sighs> Satan Denim and Sharon Needles. <laughs> what is your, um, what is your goal? Where is your goal performance? I'd like to be booked at some place like Gay Days Orlando, or um, I'd love to play at San Francisco Drag King Extravaganza, uh, the International, which is in Cleveland this year. Uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm-hmm. You know what? Do you know that they changed the name to Ohio? It's called Oh Goodbye O now. Oh Goodbye O. And Michigan is Michigan. Just yeah, FYI. Just wanted to let you know. So you leave, Cute. and you're going to Mr. Arkansas, Arkansas MI Classic. U.S. of A. It's part of the U.S. of A. system. And yeah. what are your preparations? My preparations have been wardrobe, makeup, performance, as often as possible to get used to being on stage. Uh, See, I would think that with, with male illusion, you would wear less makeup, and the, the makeup would, would actually be like, um, hair application mm -hmm. and um, 
maybe some contouring for a stronger jawline, um, maybe some clefts. But I mean, but do you wear like a foundation and a powder and eye makeup and? Um, I do wear eyeliner. I wear like a base foundation just to have some color on stage. And there's a lot of contouring around the jawline and even in the space between your eyes, it uh, makes it skinnier, you know, thinner. Uh, around the bones of the eyes, the cheekbones. Yeah. Uh, I can do anything from razor stubble to a goatee to a mustache to just a little soul patch or whatever they call it there. And so is that so. predominantly drawn on or are you gluing on hair? I'm gluing on hair. Traditionally, it's been drawn on. You can People can use mascara or uh, brush in color. No, yeah. I, I prefer and to use a stipple sponge, grease paint, yeah. crepe hair. Some of the, um, I think some of the, the drawn on just looks drawn on. Yeah. Um, where a lot of the, a lot of the MIs are on t hormones. Mm -hmm. And so they're letting their, their facial hair grow mm -hmm. in. Is there an advantage to not shaving your armpits? No, not necessarily. Um, are there men, drag kings, that, that, that do illusions that are a little bit more, um, we're going to call them sex-based, mm -hmm. where, you know, where they have hairy armpits or really strong arms mm -hmm. or, um, you know, wear wife beaters and really exploit the, the hairy armpit? Oh, yeah, yeah. Legs, armpits, everything. I think that's kind of hot. I really do. Do you know um, Buck Angel? Yes. Um, what do you think about Buck Angel? Uh, seeing the website, know you know the backstory of him. Uh, I think hey. he's hot. <laughs> I think he's really just. I think he's hot. Do you know who Buck Angel is? We're talking to Daniel Kustner. Our um, producer um i think he's hot i i mean <laughs> that's pretty amazing transformation it, it, you know what and I've, I've seen him in person once really and he's kind of short um but i mean he just looks so masculine a couple of years ago he actually came to dallas for the fetish ball or um, that's when i met him or i didn't meet him i was in a, a group of people that were talking with him um, and, and he's, but you were there. he's, yeah, he's, he's yeah. really hot. He really is. And he really exudes this masculine energy. Um, for those of you that are listening, Buck Angel is a female to male, um, transsexual. Yeah. Transgender. Um, Transgender. but has, does not have penis. Has not gone through a. Um, gender reassignment, and he does porn. Yeah, and he's going to be here in Dallas. Um, do you know where? Beyond Vanilla Conference at the Crown Plaza Hotel. Um, is he doing like a meet and greet? He's the keynote speaker at the meal. Well, I think that would be hot. Well, thank you for announcing that because I've got friends that would definitely be interested. I'm about to go have a chat with him. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, and I, I, I think, um, so would you, would you pay to see him? Sure. I On think those lines, I feel like it's all part of also educating uh, myself and others about trans issues. That's in the news a little more lately. I've got a close friend of many, many years that has recently transitioned. And it was either educate myself or lose a 34-year friendship. And why not educate myself and destroy some misconceptions that I've been raised with? Um, yeah, because they even happen within our own community where, you know, um, where we struggle with it. Right. You know, even even in the community. You know, when someone comes to us and says, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to start transitioning. Um, you know, a lot of us don't understand. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's been many occasions where people have come to me for advice on um, how to handle it, um, what to do, where to get the information. Um, 
because it, it it really is very alien and it's alien in our in our own community as well right um I've actually had some friends in the community. I had never known any transgender before I moved out here. Not really. Um, I mean, a few performers back in Nashville, but we had Calpurnia Adams at the Connection yeah. for years, and Daniel Hunter, two I remember distinctly. Uh, but I had never known any personally before I moved out here. So uh, moving to Dallas expanded my horizons quite a bit. Uh, and that's why I moved out here, was to um, be able to be me. And I can be Dante out here and be okay with it and comfortable um, and be supported and you could not do that in Nashville I didn't feel that I could the the community there was very small very conservative very hush hush about everything uh, now that I'm out here I've discovered there is a drag king community there uh, actually the 2011 mr. US of AMI lives there what's his name Jordan Allen. Jordan Allen. Yeah. And then 2010 was Amadeus. Mm -hmm. He lives in the San Antonio area. 2009 was uh, Richard Cranium. Yes. And the first ever was Xander Kennedy, and he also lives yeah. in Nashville. Xander's hot too, and he's very sweet. Yes. Um, no, all personally. And so the 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 art form is really growing. It is. It is. It's getting the recognition it deserves. Um, there's a professional side to it. There's a fun side to it. You know, whichever way people want to go with it, um, that they'll well, find. That's really the way it is. I yeah. mean, even within the within the drag queen community, you've I got your yeah. you got camp drag, and you've got your, you know, your charity fundraising, and you've got a lot of charity girls who do, you know, comedy drag, and you've got a lot of comedy girls who also do the um, serious, big hair, nailed and painted out of your mind drag, right. and you know, so there's. Are are there, do you call it different things? Is it always just male illusion? That's, that's just a general term that I use. 